Pablo, I regret to inform you that we kind of match. I know. I, know. I, I was about to say, like, I, I wore a dark navy blue, and I was like, I'm probably fine. Welcome to Highly Questionable, I guess. <laughs> I'm Pablo Torre. That's Mina Kimes. I got here first. This is, I just, this is my color. I, I just want to take this moment to remind America, we are not related. We are not brother and sister. We just happen to be two Asians on television who often end up wearing the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. Let me just uh, <laughs> roll up my old sleeves. I know, we sleeves. both roll up our sleeves a little bit. Damn! Oh, I got to roll them! I'm rolling them! Ugh. I'm rolling them. Let me roll. Let me roll. Should we change? Do we Probably. look too much? Be someone be honest with us. We need an honest opinion. Is this okay? We do look astoundingly like Meg and Jack White. Are we the Asian <laughs> white stripes? The half white stripes? The half white stripes. <laughs> Actually, the quarter white stripes. The Texans hired David Kelly. Do you still think Deshaun Watson is definitely gone? So we have been waiting for this, Mina, and I'm not talking about the hiring of David Cully, who I had to Google last night, full transparency. I'm talking about the fact that we were waiting for Deshaun Watson to officially declare that he wants a trade, to request a trade. And Adam Schefter came on Twitter and said, hey, guys, this actually happened a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so before this all feels very inevitable, I kind of want to understand like how we actually yeah. got here, because it's insane and actually unprecedented. Totally unprecedented. First, I want to pour one out for new Texans head coach, David Culley, who yeah. not only has to suffer the indignity of one Pablo Torre saying he didn't know he existed, <laughs> which in your defense, Pablo, most people, including many NFL reporters and analysts, were not particularly aware of this man. He was the Ravens passing game coordinator. Um, this is the equivalent of showing up on your first day of work and the printer is broken. The coffee machine isn't working and everyone's been lighting trash cans on fire. <laughs> I'm so sorry, David Cully. None of this is your fault. So the question was, is this actually going to happen? And improbably, it seems like it might, which we should first address by explaining why it so rarely happens in the NFL, why we don't see star quarterbacks forcing their way out of bad situations. It's because you have to have both the resources and willingness to hold out and that's a big deal in the nfl given how short careers are how much money you're giving up if you skip games but deshaun watson he does have the resources he's already made tens of millions of dollars and apparently the willingness because for him this isn't just about the texans hiring a black head coach it just isn't about just one trade it's about an organization that has proven itself to be frankly incompetent over the course of several years and toxic. And that's why we're at this point, Pablo, where it does seem like he might actually force his way out and not just force his way out, but because he has that no trade clause influence his destination. Yeah, so shout out to David Culley, the first black quarterback at Vanderbilt. I learned again via Google last night. He has an impressive career, fair it is to him. But Mina, it's also the fact that there's this real marketplace for him, right? And it's not just, yeah. you know, a bunch of teams throwing you three quarters to get your dollar back. It's the idea that you look at the NFL draft, the order, right? The Dolphins, the Jets, the Falcons, like go down the list. I mean, you get to a point. I mean, Barnwell on ESPN Plus, our friend Bill Barnwell has a column where there are 17 teams and 17 <laughs> proposals that all kind of sound pretty good to me. And when you have that cherry on top of a real rookie franchise quarterback, that's so rare to get back when you're losing a legitimate star quarterback. It makes me think that transactionally, this actually isn't as much of a robbery in waiting as it could be otherwise. Well, that's where it gets tricky, again, because of the no trade clause. So let's say a team like, I don't know, Jacksonville says, hey, Houston, you can have the number one pick. You can have Trevor Lawrence. We want Deshaun Watson, which is a totally reasonable thing for Jacksonville to do, even though Deshaun Watson's more expensive. Yes. He is a proven quarterback in the NFL. And if I'm Houston, I'm like, great, that's awesome. We never thought we could get Trevor Lawrence. But Deshaun Watson can veto it, right? And he has to walk that line now between trying to influence where he's headed, but also 
trying to get his way out of there and not complicate that process. And suddenly there are multiple parties involved in this and multiple interests. And it's in the best interest of both Watson and Houston to meet somewhere in the middle where the Texans do get a turn, but Deshaun Watson also gets what he wants, which is to not play in Houston. If you log on to Twitter today, you will see tons of photoshops of Deshaun Watson in various so jerseys, many. chats. Some of them are better than others, but they're out there. And one photoshop that I've seen on my timeline a fair amount um, is Deshaun Watson in a Washington football jersey. <laughs> Again, this is how bad things are. Washington fans, Washington football fans are looking at Houston and saying, yeah, he might want to come here. We're in better shape. <laughs> Our owner is not as toxic right now as yours. That is how low you have sunk. Is Pablo's precious Joel Embiid right that LeBron should have been tossed last night after giving him a widow boo-boo? Wait a minute. What kind of a but Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play asked question is this? Because I came here, producers, I came here because the Sixers beat the Los Angeles Lakers, your precious champion Los Angeles Lakers. And the story really should be the fact that Joel Embiid was destroying Anthony Davis. Joel Embiid, yeah. by the way, MVP. Ben Simmons had a triple-double. Mina. Oh, gosh. All of these, all, right, all, all right. of them. Uh, Tobias Harris had the game winner. We should be discussing that. Yeah, but we're not going to. We're going to talk about the, the foul or the foul that wasn't. Uh, first, let's watch it. MB not happy with the no, referee's decision. Sure Let's see what been. he had to say after the game about this call. You look at it, uh, that's a very dangerous um, play. Uh, and I guarantee you that if it was me, I would have probably been ejected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he would have been ejected. Mina, this is, this is a dangerous play. I mean, this is not a thing that should be happening when a guy is in midair. And by the way, this guy in particular has a history of like chronic injuries. For LeBron to do that, yeah, I'm sorry. I will go mama grizzly bear to protect my large adult son, Joel Embiid here. He's totally right to be offended by this. Um, I wanted to disagree with you, but when I watched it again, I can't really defend it. So my Thank you. barometer for NBA penalties, and of course I'm going to bring this back to football because I do cover the NFL, is if this would be called in football, which is a contact sport, it should probably <laughs> be egregious in basketball. Like what LeBron did there, pushing him off midair, that's OPI in the NFL. Unless, uh, for example, it's a wide receiver that like Tom Brady is throwing to, <laughs> then it doesn't get called, which is relevant here. It's not just a random pot shot at Brady. Settle down. Bucks fans or Patriots fans who are still defending him. But I actually think Weirdly. it's an astute comp because like Tom Brady, LeBron James does get a different sort of treatment, an elder statesman treatment, if you will, in the NBA. Like the dude hasn't been called for a flagrant two in 15 years or something along those lines. That sounds right. Joel Embiid, per Pablo's point, doesn't get similar respect. But it's also, I mean, to take this Brady comparison even deeper, Mina, these guys, LeBron and Tom Brady, obviously goats to some degree, but they are so image conscious. They control how they look, how they physically appear all the time so meticulously. This was LeBron James making a choice. He should have been ejected. He probably came to some sort of peace with his ejection, but he did not want to be embarrassed by Joel Embiid oh, throwing down all over him because he was doing that all night to Anthony Davis and his weird single eyebrow, and he wanted to do LeBron James and his weird hair pattern baldness that was going on back there. That's your goat, where, really. That guy is, is your goat. He started with a rational point of view, and it got emotional and messy and unnecessary so quickly there. And I also like to point out, on one hand, you were saying LeBron didn't want to be embarrassed by the physical dominance right. of Joel Embiid. On the other hand, you were suggesting that he should, Embiid should receive kid gloves treatment because he's been injured so much. You can't have it both ways. He's so strong, but inside, inside, he's just my large little boy. Guys, we actually have exclusive audio of Joel Embiid the second LeBron received his flagrant one. 
Oh, come gosh. on. This old canard. Come on. I'm sorry. He loves the game so much that he is actually masculine enough to cry. You made fun of Anthony Davis's unibrow, like for no reason there. Somewhere Anthony Davis is watching that, just minding his own business, trying to recover from last night's loss, turned on ESPN, <laughs> and Pablo Torre, of all people, was making fun of his grooming. Somewhere my grade school classmates have a photograph of me that they're uploading to the internet right now. Up next on HQ. Yeah, I can't relate to this, unfortunately. Not because I'm not great in my own way. I do believe that deep down that I maybe am. However, I'm gonna, like... Oh, let's see what people are saying in my oh, mentions. No. Okay, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, let's see. Okay, yeah, jams 45 is real. Okay. Yep, scrolling, scrolling. It's all just stuff about Mina. It's all <laughs> Mina's hive. It's just her army making fun of me. So, you said only we at Left Twix could put cookies and cream in Twix? Do you question if the wizard should just give up and trade Bradley Beal? This is so sad, Mina, what's happening in Washington, D.C. Bradley Beal, during games that he is otherwise dominating, is looking like this. Oh. That is Tuesday night's loss to Houston, in which he scored a bazillion <laughs> points. And this was last night, in which he scored 47 and lost to the Pelicans. And after the game we got to hear a little bit more from the sad Mr. Beal. It's a lot for us to do in order for us to really turn this thing around. Uh, but you know, our confidence is still high, like G said, we can't have the mindset of being three and 11. Uh, so you know, come Friday, we got another tough. And a quick second, are you frustrated? Is the sky <laughs> blue? Oh! <laughs> Save him. Mina, can someone please rescue Bradley Look. Beal from his existence? Yes, Pablo. And you know who it is. And you don't want to say it. No. It's don't. the Sixers. You know it's true. I mean, because the flip side of this question is should the Sixers trade Ben Simmons for Bradley Beal? And look, yes, Philadelphia's been on a tear lately. But yeah. Best similar to say certain stocks that will go unnamed <laughs> that success might not be built on long-term fundamentals despite how much certain people like Pablo Torre are invested in said stock like you saw what happened when Joel Embiid went out against the Lakers that's when they caved actually when Joel doesn't play they're like oh and four they need someone else and that someone is Bradley Beal well, hold on. First off, the Sixers starting lineup, they're 10. They're undefeated, I believe, 10-0 oh, or 11-0 and when all five of them play. So they don't need him. I want to actually refocus this conversation on the Beal aspect itself, Mina, because as much as it might be insulting to me to lose Ben Simmons, and it would be, I don't want that trade to happen, Bradley Beal himself, like, he's leading the league in scoring right now. He's scoring 35.4 points a game. The problem is... He's like one of those people that we know who is still in a terrible relationship with like their girlfriend from high school. All he knows is this one way of life. When you go out to dinner with this couple, you're like, I know they fight behind the scenes. I know it. They have to be sick of each other. But publicly, they're just super passive aggressive. And I just want the best for both parties there. Excellent deflection away from the Sixers there with your analogy, but I'm not going to be fooled. I see you buying more and more call options on Philadelphia, just on Reddit all day on your Sixers subreddit. Uh, and I know what you're doing, Pablo Torre. Mina, the Sixers, much like stocks, only go up. Do you question if this is a healthy way for Steph to motivate himself? So the source material for this question <laughs> is um, Andrew Bogut, former Golden State Warrior, his podcast, which actually has a pretty good name, Rogue Bogue. I think I got that right. So um, on a recent episode of Rogue Bogue, he revealed something about his former teammate, Steph Curry. Let's listen. I mean, yeah, Steph's definitely up there. Steph's one of the elite as far as preparing for games. And he's one of the unique ones where he, you know, he'll, he'll check his... Uh, He's, he's mentions at halftime when he has a bad half. It's kind of the craziest <laughs> thing I saw. Like, you know, when I first came in the league, phones were kind of frowned upon in the locker room for the most part. Now it's 
Joe, you can basically be texting at quarter time if you want. But yeah, Steph would, he'd go on social media. If he had a bad half, he would go on yeah. social media and then come out and drop 30. <laughs> I mean, so, okay, on one hand, I, you know, want to make fun of the Kevin Durant of it all. But on the other hand, having interviewed various elite athletes over the year, what over the years, one thing you often hear from them is they're always looking for ways to find motivation, especially after sure. they've already achieved greatness. And there aren't the same doubters that existed when they were, you know, undersized and 15. Who is going to give them the chip on their shoulder? And I guess it would make sense that, Steph would go to the internet where I'm sure despite all of his incredible success over the years, some guy named Lake show 420 is sitting at home with a <laughs> sub in one hand typing Steph Curry soft. And he sees that and it's motivated him to greatness. Yeah. I can't relate to this. Unfortunately, not because I'm not great in my own way. I do believe that deep down that I maybe am. However, I'm going to like, Oh, let's see what people are saying in my oh, mentions. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, yeah, jams forty five is real. Okay, yep, scrolling, scrolling. It's all just stuff about Mina. It's all <laughs> Mina's hive. It's just her army making fun of me. So I understand why Mina can feel that way and see the larger picture here about motivation. But for me, it's mostly just getting bullied by an army of sips. though we all do it right we all it's just the fact that he doesn't he doesn't actually take the thing to the thing like you just gotta you know he leaned into it and it's do you, I don't, do you have a unibrow and you're just no i i, do I might no do i wax i just take my razor and i just do some you know lawn care in the middle in between is that not a thing it's not a thing Tonight at 7.30, Clippers and Heat. So the last time we saw the Heat, they were 6-10, and 10, and they were playing defense like this. <laughs> this is against the Nuggets. This is Nikola Jokic from the baseline. Just yep, everybody just leisurely jogging at the speed of Dan Levitard in Miami. Just real <laughs> lollygagging all the way down, which is sad and also characteristic of Miami and its lifestyle. Mina, are you intrigued? Not intrigued by the Heat, but as always, I am intrigued by Nikola Jokic's cannon. And, and it saddens <laughs> me, Pablo, that John Elway is no longer GM of the Broncos, because if he was still there, I could make my customary John Elway with binoculars watching a <laughs> seven-foot-tall man throw bombs joke uh, and try to, you know, substitute Drew Locke with him. You know what? Screw it. doesn't matter that Elway is no longer there. Jokic still might have the best arm in the state of Colorado. Absolutely. And also, as, like, quarterback bodies go, I feel like Jokic should feel pretty comfortable. He's, like, one of those guys who's wildly athletic. But then you look at his arm definition, and you're like, how can you throw this ball 90 yards when you look like me? All I want is for Nikola Jokic to do a quarterback sneak. Some point in my lifetime, <laughs> just... Timber, fall forward, two <laughs> yards. Streaming online, AEW Wrestling. <laughs> so, AEW Wrestling, uh, this aired last night, but it is, I believe, a fig leaf for the producers <laughs> to reveal to the highly questionable audience that there is a wrestler named Brooke Havoc, I believe, who um, Naturally. some folks seem to think looks like a... Uh, well, someone on Highly Questionable. <laughs> I mean! It's remarkable. Mina, like, it is uncanny. And you have, like, multiple bizarros, but where does this one rank on the metal stand? Well, I do have multiple bizarros. Thank you for pointing that. I feel like every other day there's a new commercial. But I, this one, a lot of people actually seem to think it was me. Like, I had taken up a second job as a wrestler in addition to being on ESPN, which actually would be kind of sweet. I read on the internet that this was the valedictorian of AEW camp, and that is a very Mina Kimes quality. My follow-up question would be, of course, whether Brooke Havoc also sought to completely destroy the dignity of will of the eventual salutatorian, which I know also oh, this... would be true to Mina Kimes' life story. Who did you suplex, Mina, in high school to win that award? Has the blood okay. washed off of your hands yet? <laughs> the only thing I suplexed were 
my tests and exams. <laughs> okay, spoken like a true non-valedictorian. The jealousy rears its ugly head yet again. My high school did not have a valedictorian. They had someone that they nominated to give a speech. And did I give that speech, you may ask? No, but have I given speeches ever since to make up for the fact that no one ever asked me to give that valedictory de facto speech? Also, yes. That's all from us at Highly Questionable. Once again, I am Pablo Torre. That is Mina Kimes. No, we are not related. Please stop writing that fan fiction. It's getting weird. Mina Kimes, though, you can watch her on NFL Live, hosting her podcast with her dog, Lenny. And I'm on ESPN Daily, which is a podcast you should listen to for various reasons. <laughs>